If you were looking for an affordable cassette recorder with good capabilities and a beautiful design, in this video we're going to review the Hitachi D2330, an amazing bang for the buck entry level system. We'll also explore the Japanese company's history to find out why they're one of the best under the radar audio brands in the market. Let's jump into it. Many times, the first thing we choose before buying a new audio device is the brand. When it comes to cassette players or recorders, we associate names like Sony, Akai or Denon with good quality products. Those companies have earned the trust of their customers by releasing well-designed, superb sounding and long-lasting pieces of equipment for decades. That way, if you're in the market for a new cassette player, going for one of those familiar brands is a pretty safe bet. Having said that, if you're looking for an entry-level system, then there's a little caveat. Pricing. There is an inherited plus we pay to get a device from a more popular manufacturer, which leaves their second-hand market with almost no good options under the $50 mark. So I decided to go on a quest to find the perfect entry-level cassette recorder from a company that was rather overlooked by most audio lovers in order to keep our budget down. It's important to mention that choosing a less well-known audio brand doesn't necessarily mean that the device will not match in quality. And this is due to a few historical coincidences that took place during the lifespan of the cassette tape. The golden years of the compact cassette overlapped pretty much perfectly with the Japanese economic miracle from the end of the 60s until the end of the 80s. Many reputable electronics manufacturers were having such huge surpluses that they started to expand into different new industries. This phenomenon was called spillover effect and drove many excellent engineering departments to jump into the thriving market of home appliances. One of the corporations that was better at it was Hitachi. The company started as a machine repair shop for a copper mine, but quickly moved into designing and making their own electric motors fully in-house. From there, they diversified into things like building chemical plants water turbines or Japan's first nuclear reactor. They manufacture pretty much everything, from locomotives to washing machines, with great engineering and design. But in the audio world, their lack of aggressive marketing campaigns in regions like Europe or North America made their products go quite under the radar. Only from time to time, in recondite cassette forums online, you can read people's love letters to Hitachi's audio line. So I started to dig deeper in my local second-hand market till I found this beautiful black and silver compact recorder for only 25 euros, the Hitachi D2330. I got it home, gave it a good wipe, and set it up to run some audio tests. First of all, some specifications. This is a two-head, single-capstan bell-driven transport system with a very popular top-loading layout from the end of the 70s. I'm a big fan of this type of design, it fits much better on top of a bookshelf than a cassette deck from later years, which are meant to be stuck with other components. This model was listed for 500 Deutsche Marks in 1977, the equivalent of 660 euros after corrected to inflation. So it was definitely not cheap, and yet it was the lowest tier on this series, as we can see in this magazine advertisement. Still, it has the same gorgeous analog VU meters for right and left channels, as well as their respective faders. The unit was really well stored and maintained, and has very few signs of wear and tear, considering that it is almost half a century old, and that every light button and function works flawlessly, it is nothing short of amazing. But hey, enough talk, let's see how it performs. For the start, we're going to run a quick playback speed test, and check if it's dragging or going too fast. We'll be using a tape with a pre-recorded 3000Hz signal, and to monitor the frequency, we'll hook it up to a digital oscilloscope. As we can see, it's fluctuating around 3030 Hz. A pretty good result, only 1% deviation, with no pronounced variations. The D2330 supports normal ferric tapes, as well as chrome and Dolby B noise reduction. So we're going to test both cassette types, with and without Dolby B, and then compare it to a well-regarded Sony TCS-1, to a digital source and to a modern Thompson cassette recorder that I also bought for 25 euros used on the second-hand market. That will give us a good price-to-performance ratio. 
All recordings were made using the stereo microphones on a Zoom H5, without any EQ or compression, and my system is the Cambridge Audio CXA60, paired with two monitor audio bronze two speakers. And what do you think? For 25 euros, that's pretty impressive. It outperforms the Thomson by far, and is head to head with Sony, that retails for two or three times the price. I know if you're listening to this on your phone, then you probably don't hear much difference. But here live, it was hard to tell which one was digital and which one was chrome. So all things considered, the D2330 actually makes very good quality recordings, and when paired with a good chrome tape, it can reproduce a very crisp and warm sound. If you prefer to keep the lo-fi vibe, then just use Ferric and turn off Dolby noise reduction. For anyone who's just starting in this hobby, when fine at a fair price, I think it's an amazing bang for the buck entry-level system. The good thing is that you don't inevitably have to go for this particular model, not even for the same brand. Just like Hitachi, many other great Japanese audio manufacturers were producing very similar series. Iowa, Panasonic and Technics were some of the ones who brought many of these top loading cassette decks to market, so you can definitely broaden your search. You might be wondering, if these companies were producing such similar units, what made Hitachi so special? Were they actually designing and producing key audio components for other great brands? And is it true that they owned the popular cassette maker Maxell? To answer all these questions, we have to go back to the very beginnings. Sometimes in this channel, we have explored the history of audio-related manufacturing companies that once enjoyed great success, but as soon as their country's macroeconomic situation changed from good to bad, they would also drag down the drain and ended up vanishing from the market. Hitachi's story is quite the opposite, and the key of 113 years of accomplishments lays in three powerful principles that were forged during its very conception. The first and most important is perseverance. Many people might be familiar with Hitachi's products, but only a few know the severe hardships they've been through. Only 10 years after its foundation, a terrible fire burned down their manufacturing plant to the ground. Some people didn't believe the company could survive, and yet, Namihei Odaira, the former president and founder of Hitachi, decided to rebuild it from scratch, asked his employees to exert renewed efforts, and aimed at even greater growth. They pulled through the First World War and Great Depression, were forced to convert to military plans during the build-up of the Empire of Japan, and then bombed to zero during the Second World War. And again, after the war, Odaira quickly shifted to peacetime industries and bounced back. He shaped his company with the same endurance and perseverance he learned from life at a very young age. On Wednesday, July 26, 1893, an 18-year-old Odaira whose recently defunct father had left his family with huge debts, wrote in his diary, I am fully committed to the path in life that I have chosen, and I intend to go as far as humanly possible to achieve this objective. So even if I fail, I will not despair, and if I succeed, I must never become too self-centered. This was the model that made Hitachi unique, and pushed the company always forward. The second principle is education. After graduating from the Electrical Engineering Department of Tokyo Imperial University, Odaira went on and worked at different electric power companies, but what he saw there really troubled him. At that time, the Japanese electrical industry relied on overseas technologies and human resources. These major corporations were actually importing all of their heavy machinery. Those were installed by foreign engineers, and their instructors were also foreigners. At that moment he knew, if Japan was ever going to have a leading role in innovative technology, they needed to create every tool with their own hands. So he took a big risk and left a good position at Tokyo Electric Power Company 
to work at Kuhara Mining Works, more precisely, in the formerly known Hitachi Copper Mine. They promised him, if things went well, he was going to be in charge of building their own electric motors. After only two years, where Odaira relentlessly petitioned to fully dedicate his department to the production of heavy machinery, he designed, drafted and produced three of the first domestically produced 5 horsepower electric motors. The success of these first units gave him green light to build a new plant for the only purpose of creating motors and power generators. This was the birth of Hitachi Limited, but Odaira's work was by no means yet finished. Based on his motto that companies are their people, that same year, an apprenticeship training school was established. From then on, they put an emphasis on engineer training and offered exceptional conditions to attract a team of elite engineers who had graduated from imperial universities. Thanks to these efforts, Hitachi was at the forefront of the development of superior original technology and products. During the years of the cassette tape, many Japanese brands were globally praised for producing high-quality devices, but little people know that Hitachi was the actual supplier of key components, like semiconductors, ICs and power supplies, for big names like Marantz or Yamaha. So Hitachi's gear is absolutely top-notch. Nowadays, Hitachi's Academy, High School and Technical College continue Odaira's mission of developing human resources. The third and last principle is diversification, a concept that was adopted by the company from the very beginning. In 1910, only two years after its foundation, they went from a small machine repair shop to designing and building 5 horsepower electric motors in-house. Only four years after, Hitachi took their first big risk. The Iwamuro power station in the Gunma prefecture had placed an order abroad of a 10,000 horsepower water turbine that never arrived due to the breakout of the First World War. No Japanese manufacturer had ever built something like that. Nevertheless, Hitachi dared to take the challenge. Their positivity and determination won the hearts of the power station officials and ended up winning the order. The company's whole workforce put all their efforts into this project, whilst the rest of the industry thought that Hitachi was not mature enough to take such endeavor. With a lot of hard work and the use of originality to beat their lack of experience, in 1915, the water turbine was finally completed. The results were better than anticipated, and the remaining two turbines were also ordered from Hitachi. This very early success gave them the confidence to take even more complicated and diverse projects. In the next decades, this diversification made the company expand to markets like home appliances, exporting 5,000 pans to America, or purchasing a shipbuilding facility and turning it into a prosperous railway locomotive manufacturing plant, or designing and building an entire chemical plant. In 1964, Hitachi acquired a small battery and magnetic tape company called Maxell Electric Industry. It was the beginning of the Japanese economic miracle, and the company's surpluses were flowing in the form of cash and resources to every single division, the famous spillover effect. In July 1966, the already called Hitachi Maxell Corporation released the first domestically produced compact cassette tape, and through the next decades, they became one of the most renowned names in the industry. Today, Hitachi is among the world's top biggest 150 companies and conducts businesses ranging from information technology and artificial intelligence to big data and infrastructure. These three pillars were instrumental in Hitachi's long history of achievements. The advantage of producing their own original technology, having the tenacity to push always forward, and working together with every single branch of the industry makes them a safe bet as your next vintage audio purchase, and probably one of the best sleeper audio brands in the market. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you were looking for an entry-level cassette system, then you should definitely give them a try. And Hitachi's history is so rich that it cannot be covered in just one single episode, so stay tuned for future videos that will explore it even further. Thanks for watching, until next time.